Okay, I have one of those uh, challenges that I take my glasses off, I won't be able to see you, but if I keep my glasses on, I won't be able to read my notes. So you're all a little fuzzy now. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I think really what I'd like to do is maybe set some of the context for uh, the uh, next presenter in terms of the information you're going to hear from Michael and in terms of what's the current state, if you will, of uh, the innovation and quality agenda in Ontario's healthcare system and how some of those are uh, engaged uh, with the long-term care home sector, but also in terms of the integration of those um, projects and initiatives um, along the continuum of care. So first of all, I have to learn how to operate this one today. Great. Oh, I could pay, point to this one apparently instead. That's great. Um, again, Ontario right now, we're focused on uh, an agenda of quality. And I think that we're really talking about an agenda that is enabling of quality improvement and, and quality improvement in and of itself um, leads uh, to innovation in both uh, leading practices and doing what we do differently to achieve better outcomes for the people we serve in terms of both their clinical outcomes, quality of life, and both uh, client and family satisfaction. And I know at your research day today, you've had a lot of presenters talking to you about a number of these initiatives that are going on across the province. And uh, they align and link very much into a lot of the work that we're all engaged in with together. We all agree that we uh, want to improve the health status of Ontarians and to achieve better uh, health care at, uh, at that is cost effective. I think lots of speakers will always tell you uh, that we can't keep um, expanding the um, money that we spend on health care, that we have a finite amount of money, and that we need to, how do we use that money in a way that uh, still promotes excellent health care uh, for the province. So we're looking at developing agendas uh, in terms of new knowledge and new e evidence that's critical to the aging population, both today and into the future. We're looking at wanting to improve our system design and system delivery models for seniors to help them remain in the community and in their own homes for as long as possible and to make sure that the services people do move onto or into are the ones that are best able to meet their needs and are the right place at the right time. And we also think that we all need to take responsibility for better health care and better outcomes and around doing that within um, our current budgets and that we need to effectively collaborate together in order to achieve those outcomes. I think that many of um, us are involved in conversations these days that are really about um, looking at opportunities to collaborate as opposed to working within our silos and it's only the clients themselves or the seniors or the patient who actually moves through the system and has contact with everybody and that we need to have a system that we move through that continuum with people. Many of you have uh, uh, been part of conversations around the new Excellent Health Care for All Act that's been introduced by the government. And I think that you'll see a lot of alignment around uh, innovation and quality that you're talking about for long-term care homes being the cornerstone of this act. While this act is starting in the acute care sector, it is envisioned that over time all the other health care sectors will also align with the basic principles of this act, which includes care that's organized around to support the needs of the individual. So again, looking at that person-centered care as being the cornerstone of our service delivery models. That the quality and the continuous quality improvement is critical to meeting the goals of our health care system. That payment, policy, and planning supports and, um, quality and efficiency. So there's lots of conversations that we're having now about incentives. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the payment models and bundling payment models to achieve health outcomes. And looking at quality care is supported by best evidence and standards of care, which again, this is the second year of this conference and the size of the room compared to the size of the room last year is enormous. So I think that the conversation around best practice evidence and standards is really one that resonates with people and is a way forward for many of us. 
And the last part down at the bottom of this slide really also talks about what we see as being how do we talk about quality to Ontarians in the future. One is one about setting the standards, then providing the tools and supports uh, to, to meet those standards. A lot of the work that you're undertaking right now in terms of the introduction of common assessment tools, the introduction of the residents first, these are all tools and supports to achieve quality. Then there's the monitoring function. Are we, are, are we achieving and, and realizing what we hope to and then publicly reporting to Ontarians about how well we're doing. And we see that there's a significant alignment between the excellent health care for all and the long-term care home sector's focus on the resident experience. A lot of the work that, that you're already engaged in very um, nicely aligns with the excellent health care for all. So there are probably some parts that we're ahead and some parts that we need to catch up as time goes on. And that includes certainly the common assessment tool. And this September, um, a five-year journey was achieved by all the homes being um, now on the assessment tool. And for all of you, um, certainly from the ministry, I want to say thank you. Um, it, I know it's been a long, hard journey, but I think we will now start to reap the rewards and the understanding of the impact that we have on people's lives. We will also, uh, the Residents First initiative, the first 122 homes, and now for year two, another 100 homes, and many of you have already told us that this is the most transformational activity you've been involved in in the long-term care home sector uh, for quite some time. And so I think as, again, that rolls out between uh, a long um, all the homes, you'll be able to um, see the impact on terms of quality care. And then we're also still working on, um, a, I, Walter was here today talking about resident and family experience and surveys and again starting to roll that work out and publicly report to Ontarians about how they experience both the long-term care sector but we're also working on it for the home care sector. I think the work that's been done, uh, I see, uh, I saw uh, David from the Alzheimer's Society here around the uh, behavioral system, support systems. There he is. I see waving of a, uh, something blurry. Um, and again, the, the, the regs allowing the specialized units. And I think that we haven't even tapped into the harness of what innovation can be created around specialized services and defining a unique uh, place uh, in the in the service continuum for homes and bringing specialty to their to their service models. Many of you have had contact uh, with the aging at home strategy in some format in your communities, and I think the investment over the three years of over. $380 million to, base do to the base budgets of those of the community services and uh, the unique opportunity to deliver new services that have come out of that. Many of them you've had uh, opportunity to be involved in through Homes First. Again, the people make decisions about what next in their care continuum get those decisions being made at the, in their home as opposed to under circumstances in an acute care facility and whether it is the right time to move to a more uh, um, supervised setting in a long-term care home. The GEM nurses in terms of, again, helping people at the emergency room make decisions about where, what's the best next step for their care. The RESTORE programs another opportunity to people to gain their strength and then make decisions that are more long-term around whether th this is the right time for placement to a long-term care home. The assisted living for supported housing, creating new models of people to remain in their home with 24-hour care. The specialized geriatric services uh, around complex uh, seniors and then many of you are involved with the nurse-led outreach teams to make sure that there is expertise in nursing and nurse practitioners in your homes that alleviates the needs of transporting people back and forth to hospitals 